everybody and welcome back to my channel. I am Mamie and this is Mamie's Journey where I take you guys along with me on my life's adventures and journeys. And today I'm coming to you guys with a video on flight attendant budgeting. And now this is specifically towards things that you're going to have to budget towards that a lot of people who aren't in this career don't necessarily have to think about on a regular basis, but we most certainly do. There are a lot of things that people just don't really think of come into the expenses of being a flight attendant and some of them aren't set for everybody depending on your airline some of these things might get covered or you might get like a stipend to go towards them other things you may not we're gonna get straight into it these are things as a flight attendant that you need to budget for first thing if you guys see me looking down that's because I am looking at my notes that I took I wrote out a whole list of things and this is something that all flight attendants need to budget for, and that is tip money for your shuttle drivers. Guys, do not be that person who does not tip the shuttle driver. You are communicating with a shuttle driver on every single trip. If you are a commuter, you're probably communicating with even more shuttle drivers if you're doing the hotel route. So make sure that you have your ones. I know it becomes a pain having to go and withdraw money to get ones all the time. But what I like to do is just withdraw like $30, $20, get cash back, and then um, get that in ones. Or sometimes, your shuttle driver will have change for you. So say you only have a 10 on you, just ask them, hi, do you have change? Nine times out of 10, they will because they're shuttle drivers and they get tips. So make sure you budget for tipping your shuttle drivers. Um, I like to give between one and $2 if I'm really vibing with the person or having a good conversation, maybe I'll give them like $3, but at least give like a dollar per every trip. Um, you know, it's any sort of customer service interaction where it's hospitality driven, I believe, or like a service hospitality, then I feel people deserve a tip. So make sure that you have your tips ready with you. Don't be that person who's like, sorry, I don't have it. I know sometimes it'll happen, but try your best. Always budget for tips. I would say anywhere between 30 and $50 a month should be more than enough to cover all of your shuttle driving, shuttle driving tips. The next thing, oh man, okay, guys, if you are a commuter, your life is going to be completely different and it's gonna be a whole new world outside of if you were to live in base. As a commuter, for most airlines, if you need a place to stay the day before your trip or the day following your trip, that responsibility and that financing is all on you. So you need to be budgeting for hotel stays like me right now. I am on A days, I have not been called in. I don't live in my base. And so I pay for hotels the night before my trip. This can become very costly. Some bases are really lucky and they offer um, crash pads, not through your job, but like you can search up crash pads and you can find them easily. In my base, crash pads aren't really um, accessible. There are few, they are few and far between when it comes to crash pads in my area. And when you think about budgeting for, if you are going to do the crash pad route, you have to think about whether or not you even have transportation to make it from your crash pad to the hotel. Because if not, that's gonna add on another expense and that's going to be Uber or any sort of ride share that you're doing if you're doing Lyft or something like that. Or if you have to do public transportation, if that's an additional cost. For me, I decided to go the hotel route I end up spending a good amount on hotels, right around 500 a month on hotels, which I know is crazy and it's more than a crash pad. However, if I was to do any of the crash pads in my area, I would also have to pay for the ride share and I would end up spending the same amount, but this way I get a free shuttle to the hotel or free shuttle to the hotel and free shuttle to the airport. And the only thing I'm paying for, of course, is my tip and my hotel for that night but I have my own space. So you kind of have to like pick and choose. You can sometimes find really good crash pads for like between $230 to $400 um, a month. And that could be great if you have either really close 
public transportation or two, you have your own car to be able to go to and from the airport, that could be a great option for you. But just know, if you are a commuter, that that is going to be an additional expense and you should budget for it. I would say have anywhere in your budget for commuting anywhere from three to $500 a month. It can be a lot, but you'll figure it out. I promise it's doable. And typically it only lasts like that for like maybe the first year and then you get comfortable. Maybe you decide to move to your base or you get based in the place that you live or you know that pay raise comes in and then you're able to, to have a place or split a place with people that you know. Again, I like my own space, so I prefer to do the hotel route, but to each his own, just make sure you're budgeting for it, whichever way you choose to go. The next thing I would say, oh my goodness. Um, and I know this is kind of like a given. You're like, no, of course you're gonna need luggage, right? But guys, luggage is very pricey. And if you want good luggage that's actually going to hold up, you want to make a pretty good investment. I actually got mine for a really good price. Of course, I got Travel Pro because that's what a lot of people recommend. Um, but Travel Pro can be very pricey. I was actually looking around, I went to Macy's and they had full sets, but the full sets were like anywhere between $800 and like $1,200 for a full set. And I actually ended up spending more than I needed to. I purchased it on Amazon and I got it for a wonderful deal. I believe I only spent around $300 for my luggage set and it came with a, a carry-on size luggage and a a checked bag luggage and i don't know why i didn't fully think about this but let me save you guys some money in advance you don't need to buy a new checked bag your checked bag is probably only going to be used for you when you are going and traveling on leisure and it doesn't have to be according to whatever your policy is because that's on your leisure time so only pay for a checked bag and then of course a lunchbox and i'll get into that in a second but just search for Travel Pro or whatever brand you're going to go with that meets your guys' policy, if it's all black, whatever. Search on Amazon first. I'm going to tell you, Amazon um, is a lifesaver sometimes. And sometimes when you're going into like these luggage stores that they have like inside of the hood or inside of the airports, um, or if you're going to like Travel Pro website specifically, it can be kind of pricey. Also look if you guys get any sort of discounts because that can help. But me personally, I got mine off of Amazon. If you guys would like, I'll, actually, I'm just gonna do it. That way, if you guys need luggage, I'll go ahead and link the one that I got down below. It can be kind of hard to get on Amazon because sometimes the availability is like ran out and so you have to wait for it to be back in stock. But don't worry. Amazon search high and low on Amazon. Sometimes you can also search on Facebook Marketplace or like offer up and you can get a good discount. But make sure you're budgeting for luggage and you'll probably need to like change out your luggage once every like couple of years. So just make sure that you have that in the in the budget and try not to spend more than $300, guys. I know that um, that can be a lot for some people. Other people are like, oh, $300, that's nothing. But $300 goes a long way. And that is three nights in a expensive hotel if you have a discount. So just remember it that way. Again, Amazon, that was my best friend. And my Travel Pro has lasted me. I haven't had any problems with it. And it's small enough to go inside of the overhead bin along with also being like large enough to hold all of my stuff. And I only carry two bags with me. And the next thing that you need a budget for that I'm talking about that I carry with me is my, oh, I guess I carry three bags. But anyways, um, is my lunchbox, guys. And my lunchbox, I believe I've already shown you guys in a previous video, my lunchbox. I absolutely adore my lunchbox. I got it for such a great price. There are larger lunchboxes that you can get, like the six pack bag and you know other sorts of brands. I was just looking for something that was going to be sturdy, that was going to hold up, and that wasn't gonna be outrageously expensive. I did not feel like spending more than $100 on a lunchbox, but to each his own. I just wanted one that had the sliding pouch to go over my luggage that was going to be black and uniform, go well with my, my actual luggage, and just make sure that it was going to keep my, my food cool. My duffel bag 
is awesome. I'll leave that link down below as well. It keeps all of my food really cool as long as I have ice packs in there with it. And I can also use it as a duffel because it has additional pockets along the sides. So make sure that you also budget for a good duffel slash um, lunchbox. And that leads into my next thing, toiletry bags. Toiletry bags are, they're not 100% essential in the beginning. However, they are helpful to have. And I have saved a lot of space in my bag by investing in one toiletry bag that wasn't even really an investment. I got it, it's on off of Amazon. I can link that down below as well. It's super cute, it's pink, and it's kind of collapsible. Some people like a sturdy, like harder outer case. This is my toiletry bag. And some people don't like that it's, um, a soft outer case. I personally like that because if I do need to compress it at all, I can while putting it inside of my duffel or while putting it inside my luggage. And this little guy I think was only like 12, it was either between 12 or $15 on Amazon. And she's cute. She has separate compartments. The clear, I put all of my like face products and my like hygiene products for my face and skincare regimen in here my serums all of that jazz and then on the bottom area is where i keep all of like my makeup i'll even go ahead and just quickly show you guys what it looks like on the inside i have like all of my brushes up at the top which is really cool and then i just have all of my makeup supplies at the bottom um and this has worked great for me i love it it's super cute and no water gets into it which is really good because sometimes it can get a little wet around the sink area and if that's where you're setting your bag stuff can get inside i did have other makeup bags that um allowed water in and that was just so annoying so this is a great find it comes in different colors i'll link it down below but make sure you're also budgeting for toiletry bags if you are trying to consolidate on space and it just it saves you a lot of a lot of time having to shuffle through everything you could just pack everything into one little bag and then be good to go stick that inside of your luggage the next thing <laughs> shoes oh my goodness yes okay guys flight attendant shoes depending on the brand that you get can be pricey um <laughs> why do i this is not an endorsement for amazon they do not pay me for <laughs> for telling you that i got things off of amazon um but i did also buy my flight attendant shoes off of amazon clark's is a pretty well-known like flight attendant brand right and there's also like dance co i prefer my clark's over like what i've seen on dance sorry guys my hair is like bugging me over what i've seen on dance co um, because it has like a little bit of a heel that doesn't look like a, I'm not a huge fan of like wedges. So I like a little bit of a separate heel and mine are, yes, they're kind of like grandma shoes, but they're good for your feet. And that is what's important if you're going to be standing all day. So if you are going to buy shoes, don't go the super cheap route where you're going to be in shoes that are going to damage your feet because you're standing all day, posture is so important. Like just take care of your guys' feet. Orthopedic care is just so incredibly important. Um, the ones that I got are Clark's. I'll insert a picture here if I can uh, find them on Amazon and then I'll go ahead and leave a, a link down below as well. A lot of different airlines have different policies on the types of shoes that you guys can wear. But the point of this is you are going to want to budget for shoes because you're gonna to have to need them right away when you start on the line. And then you are gonna to wanna to have to re-up re them and get new ones probably once every year or so because you're doing so much on the plane, at least for me being at in the back galley and like having to take off the brake or put the brake back on or like push the cart up and like using your feet kind of scuffs them and eventually they're going to start to get a little bit worn down so just invest in a good pair of shoes i would say you could find a good pair of shoes for under 60 dollars anything over that um <laughs> to each zone if you want to if you have like inserts or something that you feel like are just absolutely necessary that's perfectly fine just do whatever is best for your feet so shoes a must um for men as well 
shoes are a must really look into different brands i can't really speak too much for what brands are great but i'm sure you can find them on amazon or you can ask people who are on like flight attendant groups on facebook great recommendations there the next one okay so I talked about the lunchbox, the ice packs. This isn't like a crazy investment, but getting, getting good ice packs for your lunchbox is going to be important to keep your food from going bad. And it's going to save you money in the long run so that you don't have to spend money as much out and about eating. And I'll get into that in a second. But make sure that you uh, spend a little bit of money to get some ice packs that are reusable because some people do use like just ice and pour it into a bag. And that can be great because if you think about it, like your ice packs are eventually going to melt and you're not always going to have access to a freezer to refreeze them. However, the downside is leaking. A lot of ice packs will leak if they're the ones that you just put ice into or they create condensation and that can ruin your food. So I just prefer to have ice packs with me. So just go ahead, go to Dollar Tree, go to Target, go to Walmart, go wherever you need, grab some ice packs, just refreeze them and bring them with you on a trip. If you are lucky enough to have just like a little, a little mini fridge inside of your hotel room, you could just stick them inside of the freezer area and you'll be good to go. Put them back in there and boom, your food is fresh. Then next thing you need to budget for a flight attendant that I try to be good with as much as I can, but reality is sometimes you run out of time and you just don't have the time or the space to bring the amount of food that you need to last you for a whole trip. And if you're unlucky and you are gone for six days at a time, good luck finding a lunchbox that will hold breakfast, lunch, and dinner for six whole days. Like it's just almost darn near impossible unless you're eating like a granola bar for for a meal and that's just not how I roll. So budget for going out expenses for work specifically outside of your leisure time or your daytime activities when you're not working, you are going to wanna to have to budget some sort of allotment or a lot of money towards your food expenses. And something that goes along with that is your Starbucks money. I don't know about you guys, but I love a good Starbucks. Maybe it's because I'm a Washingtonian through and through, but Starbucks is like an essential for me. I don't get it all the time. I tried to treat myself out like once a week to Starbucks, but sometimes it's two times, maybe three a week, just depending on how exhausted I am. And even though coffee doesn't necessarily work to like lift me up in an energy way, just having a good coffee puts me in a good mood. So um, allotting any of that is also going to be important. Guys, I think that is all I had for my tips and tricks for everything for you guys, but I hope that this was helpful. Again, I will go ahead and leave um, the links for all of the things that I mentioned down below. And if you guys have any other questions on things that you need to be budgeting for or things you need to look forward to when it comes to financing for a flight attendant life and experience, feel free to go ahead and leave it in the comments down below. Don't forget to like and subscribe and I will see you guys in my next video. Bye guys.